Hello everyone, thanks for the introduction. And uh, before my talk, I would like to give a short introduction to you of my institute, the DCS Center. The Data Assurance and the Communication Security Research Center was founded in 1980, and I think it's one year later after the establishment of COSAC. And the DCS Center is the patent holder of the SM series uh, algorithms of, chi of China and uh, we have more than 60 staffs <coughs> and our research covers cryptographic algorithms, crypto cryptology engineering and system security and uh, identity management. And uh, This is our campus at the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences so if anyone would like to visit Beijing or have some collaborative work with us, you can just uh, contact me. So I'm going to talk about uh, automatic symmetric key cryptanalysis with constraints. And the content of this talk comes from many researchers, but uh, I'm avoiding to insert the reference inline, so I just list uh, the references at the end of the slides. So first, uh, why we need automatic symmetric key cryptanalysis? Uh, when we design a symmetric key cipher, there are a lot of characters to be considered. First is the functionality, security, and uh, its implementation uh, area, its latency, energy, power, and uh, some others. This is due to the diversity of the application scenarios. For example, in the, in the on-vehicle networks, we want the algorithms to be of low lat latency. And in some medical implements, we hope the power, the energy consumption is low. Otherwise, we need to recharge it frequently. And in the RFID tags, it cannot consume too much power because the energy is extracted from the electromagnetic field of the readers. So it's impossible to have only one cipher to satisfy all the requirements of all applications. Here is a list of the lightweight ciphers designed uh, in the past uh, 20 years. This is extracted from Alex et al's work of the state of the art in lightweight symmetric key cryptography. Uh, what's worse is that uh, for every single cipher in this list, it can be a family of ciphers. Take the Siemens and SPAC, for example. For, every, for each cipher, there are 10 versions with different uh, block size and uh, key size combinations. So in short, for cryptanalysts, crypt there are many ciphers to be analyzed. And uh, for designers, designing one single cipher, it is equivalent uh, to analyze many ciphers with the same structure, because the designers need to identify the optimal parameter choices. So in general, we have a lot of symmetric key ciphers to analyze. But for even one cipher, we have to consider all known attacks. And uh, for even one known technique of cryptanalysis, it is a uh, very tedious and time-consuming, error-prone, and uh, sometimes boring task. So th this is why we need automatic symmetric key cryptanalysis. And uh, I would like to divide the techniques of automatic cryptanalysis into two categories. The first one is dedicated uh, search algorithms. And uh, Matisse algorithm uh, based on branch and bound algorithms is uh, representative. And uh, the other type is the constrained programming based method, include, include uh, mixed integer linear programming based method, set and uh, satisfiability modular theory based method, and uh, classical constraint programming. 
And uh, for dedicated search algorithms, they are generally implemented uh, with general purpose programming languages like C or C++ or Java or Python. So it gives full control of the resolution logic and the representation of the data to the crypto analysts. So its advantage, advantages is that uh, it can be very efficient in some specific cases. For example, if we want to identify the optimal differential characteristic of the present cipher, it just uh, takes several seconds if we use the Matisse, optimize the Matisse algorithm. But if we use uh, mixed integer linear programming, it takes several days. Uh, the disadvantages of the dedicated search algorithms is that uh, it's generally difficult and tedious for programming. Uh, and uh, the performance is very dependent on the skills and the experience of the implementer. For example, the performances of Matisse algorithm implemented by different people can be quite different. And also it's bad for code reuse. When we try to analyze a new cipher, generally we need to re-implement it from scratch. Uh, for constraint constrained programming based method, it's easy for programming and uh, it decouples the modeling and the resolution process, which means that we can stand on the shoulder of giants because we have many available solvers. But, uh, there, but maybe it's not, maybe not flexible enough for some specific cases. Like Froder said that constrained programming represents one of the closest approaches computer science has yet made to the holy grail of programming. The user states the problem and the computer solves them. <coughs> so in my opinion, the most important uh, advantage of the constraint-based uh, approach is that the decoupling of the modeling and the resolution process, it, make, it makes the an analysis process descriptive. The cryptanalyst only need to describe the problem and then input it to some off-the-shelf solvers and the solver gives the solution. And uh, often the solvers are developed uh, by a whole community of constraint, constraint researchers. So here the basic working flow when we try to analyze the cipher using constraint-based approach. In the first step, we need to introduce a set of variable, variables. These variables represent uh, the target uh, characteristics we want to analyze. For example, in differential cryptanalysis, the variables may represent uh, the differential, the active patterns of the truncated differential or the exact values of the intermediate uh, differences of the targeted characteristic or some values of the division trials. And uh, these variables are linked uh, by different operations in the cipher. And uh, this, so they are constrained according to the characteristics they describe. For example, if a set of variables describe the input and the output uh, difference of, a, of an S-box, then they are constrained according to the differential distribution table of the S-box. In the next step, we need to describe the constraints between the variables with the languages that uh, can be recognized by the technique we employed. For example, in the mixed integer programming paradigm, we need to transform the constraints into a set of linear inequalities. In the third step, we need to set up the objective function according to the problem. There are two types of problems. The first one is optimization problems. For example, if, if we want to determine the minimum number of active S-boxes for differential linear cryptanalysis. 
And the second one is decision problems. We only want to know whether there exists a solution of the problem. For example, in impossible differential criminalysis, we want to know whether the given input and output difference form an impossible differential. And finally, we can solve the model using off-the-shell off solvers or optimizers. So to be more concrete, I would like to go through the procedures for cryptanalysis based on mixed integer linear programming. And I think Nikki Muha is the first uh, to propose to use mixed integer linear programming in differential cryptanalysis. And I think this work was done when he was in Leuven. So what is lin mixed linear integer programming? It's just a mathematical model, and uh, we have a set of variables. In this simple case, the variables are x, y, and z, and they are integers, and they can take values only in this set, the zero one. Know that they are integers, not Boolean, var not Boolean var var values. And this, is three, and this is the constraint. It's just uh, three linear inequalities. And here is the objective function, which is to minimize a linear function. So here is an example. If we want to find some related key differential characteristic, truncated differential char characteristic of AES in the related key model, then we can introduce a variable for every byte of the states and uh, the key registers, then the variable takes value 1 if the cell is differentially active. Otherwise, it's, it takes the value of 0, which means that uh, it's inactive. In cryptanalysis, the variables we introduced uh, often are 0, 1 variables, because they describe the active patterns of the actual bit level values of the differences or division trials or linear masks. So generally, they are zero one variables. If there is no constraint, then the values, the variables can take, can take any value of zero one. So for this sim simple example, x, y, z, if there is no constraint, x, y, z can take eight valuations from 000 to 111. So what is constraint? A constraint just to specify a subset of all possible valuations the, var the variables can take. For example, if x, y, z are linked together where the exclusive or operation, then it can only take these four valuations out of the eight possibilities. So a constraint is essentially specify a subset of all possible valuations. So the next step, we need to describe the constraints with proper languages. For MLP, this language is linear inequality, because the solvers only recognize linear inequalities. <coughs> There are six methods to convert a constraint into linear inequalities. The first one is cutting, which means given a, an impossible or invalid bit pattern, we want to remove it, cut it off from the feasible regions. So there is one gen generic method to achieve this. We can just uh, read out the bit patterns to, into this template. And then this, this inequality can remove the 0, 1, 0, 1 pattern. You can check that this in, the solutions of this inequality, uh, only this pattern do not, does not satisfy this inequality. So it is cut off by the inequality. The second method is convex hull computation. In this method, we regard the bit vectors 
as some discrete points in high dimensional spaces. And then we can compute the H representation of the convex hull of these discrete points. And the H representation just some a set of linear inequalities whose solutions are the set of this discrete point. And it is proved that uh, the H representation, the solution of the H representation is exactly the set of this point if they are 0, 1 vectors. Uh, however, the number of inequalities in the H representation is very huge. So if we try to solve these constraints directly, it's, it, it's very time consuming. So we need to use some method to reduce the number of inequalities. There are some generic methods which can, for example, for a 4-bit S-box, the H representation may contain 300, about 300 inequalities. But after we reduce the number of, of inequalities, it can be reduced to around 30 ones. Another one is logical condition modeling. And sometimes we do not describe the constraint using the subset, but uh, describe it using some conditions or natural languages. For example, we may want to ensure that when A, B, C equals 1, 0, 1, th then D must be 1. This, this, this kind of condition also can be transformed to linear inequalities based on some generic method. We just read out the bits and uh, construct the inequality in this template is OK. The next method is a QM method. Assume that uh, ABC in D, and D is a constraint for ABC, and it's a subset of, the, of this vector space. Then we can construct a Boolean function f a b c such that uh, it equals it, it equals to one if and only if a b c is in d so we can remove all invalid patterns by dictate that f a b c should be e greater or equal to one then this remove all the impossible patterns the question is f a b c is a boolean function but so how can we convert f to f to a linear inequalities so for for a boolean function we can obtain the its product of some representation then then this condition can be transformed by inspect the terms of this product of some representation because f a b c is equal or greater than one if and only if every term of the representation is equal to one so this implies that uh, given uh, product of sum of term uh, representation the number of inequalities is the number of terms so this is also can be a very huge huge number. So we also need to reduce the number of linear inequalities. This can be done using the MQ algorithm. Uh, the difference between the MQ method and the, the, and the convex hall computation method is that uh, for convex hall computation, it can only analyze small, small dimensions. For example, I think it's scale up to, to dimension 10, but, uh, but for QM method, it scale up to dimension, I think, 16. So this can be used to analyze very large S-boxes, for example, 8-bit S-boxes. But the disadvantage of MQ method, it, uh, it generally it produces much more inequalities than the convex hall computation method. Another method is the finite automata. 
we can constrain, we can convert a constraint into a finite automaton. For, for this example, we have two states, zero and uh, one. And the state machine has an, has an input. The input are integers, and uh, they can be represented by three-bit three bit number. So the finite automata can be modeled as a set of zero one vectors. Then we can use the convex hull computation of the MQ method to obtain the description of this kind of constraints. Finally, there are some ad hoc methods. For example, for some simple operations, like exclusive R, we can just uh, guess some linear inequalities and such that their solution is exactly the solution of this equation. Note that uh, the, the linear inequalities for a same constraint can be different, it's not unique. And the different uh, linear inequalities may result in different resolution performance so one interesting problem is to find the best uh, conversion that can make the resolution process much efficient. Then we can set up the objective function. And in, for example, if we want to for search for the best uh, related key or single key differentials with the highest possible probability, we can set the objective function to minimize the active S boxes or minimize the weight of the non some nonlinear components. And in linear cryptanalysis, we just want to maximize the correlations. And for meet in the middle attacks, we want to minimize the determination set of the output differential sequence. And for impossible differential, zero correlation linear and the division cryptanalysis, it, it correspond, corresponds to the decision problem. So we just uh, test uh, whether the model has a solution or not. Finally, the mixed integer programming problem can be solved using off the shell mo uh, solvers. Um, my favorite solver for mixed integer linear programming is the Groovy solver. It is very efficient. Uh, take the most uh, famous open source solver, the SAIP. Uh, for some problems I tested, uh, a model can be solved by SAIP maybe in several days. But if I apply the Groovy solver, it just takes seconds. So it's very efficient. And here is the uh, applications for uh, mixed integer programming based uh, cryptanalysis. And here is a list of supported cryptanalytic techniques. We can, we can use the milk based method for single key and the related key differential cryptanalysis, linear cryptanalysis, or correlation cryptanalysis for some stream ciphers or mode and uh, impossible differential, zero correlation linear division prop property analysis, and the DS and the classical meet in the middle attacks. And uh, this kind of methods has been, have been applied to analyze many schemes, including block ciphers, both S box based and uh, ARX based, and the stream ciphers, authenticated encryption, and the hash function. So its application range is very wide. And uh, in our institute, we have prototype an MILP-based framework for automatic cryptanalysis. And here, the architecture of the design. And the input is a, is a domain-specific language used uh, to describe the cryptographic algorithm. And uh, we input this. It, it's like a kind of programming language that is dedicated uh, for describe cryptographic algorithms. And then we have a DSL puzzle. 
This is used to convert the domain-specific language to intermediate representation, to symbol tables and uh, constraint tables. Then this, this intermediate representation goes through the model builder to produce the desired uh, mixed integer programming models. And this model is produced according to the cryptanalytic technique. For example, when we consider differential attack, it produces the differential model. And if we want to do division analysis, it only produces the division model. And we also have some pattern iterators. This is used for generate some specific bit patterns. For example, in impossible differential analysis, we generally only consider input and output differences with Hamming weight one. So we can iterate all these specified patterns and produce the corresponding models. Then these models can be solved using off-the-shelf solvers. This, corresponding, this corresponds to the result of the crypt analysis result. And here is an example. For the present cipher, it has 60, 64 bits, and it's a SPN cipher, a layer of SBox and the bit permutation layer. And the domain-specific language to describe this cipher is listed here. And the first line is a programmer. It specifies we want to do bit-oriented analysis or, or word-oriented analysis because we want to extract the actual value of the intermediate difference, differences of the characteristic. So in this case, we specify it's bit-oriented. And then here are the components of the cipher involved. Here is the S boxes, here is the S box, and here is the permutation layer. This is the permutation table. And the, the S layer is, is constructed with 16 S boxes. And finally, these components are linked together by these statements. For example, this means the PI goes through the S layer and produce QI. And then QI goes through the P layer, produce the input of the next round. And finally, we specify if we want to search for differential characteristics, we want to specify that the input difference is, is non-zero. So we can input this to the system, and the system will automatically generate uh, models for differential for differential cryptanalysis and division cryptanalysis meet in the middle or some other techniques. And this is, in, this is for single key model. In practice, we can also specify the key schedule here. Then it can automatically analyze it in the related key model. And when we have a domain-specific language, there are a lot of work to do. For example, we need to develop editors with syntax highlighter and uh, some compilers to check the syntax of the input. Also, it is preferable if we have a data flow analyzer. So in the end, uh, we may uh, visualize the analysis, the process, and uh, the result. So here is some sna snapshot of the system. Uh, sorry, there are some Chinese characters. And uh, we can log into the system and uh, here are the techniques we can choose. This is differential cryptanalysis and uh, linear cryptanalysis, impossible differential cryptanalysis, zero correlation, and uh, some others. Then we can input the domain specific language of the target cipher here. And then we can press the compile button. And if the compiling process is uh, successful, we can press the analyze button then it will return the result. Now we are working on some visualization process. We want to visualize the, for example, if, if we consider differential analysis, when the solver solving the, during the resolution process, the solution is constantly change. It's approaching its optimal value. Then it has some patterns, it's changing 
constantly. So we want to visualize it so we can have some intuitive understanding. And it is also very good for teaching students. And finally, I want to introduce some recent advancement in the area of automatic symmetric cryptanalysis. First, there is a trend to combining the power of constraint-based approach and the dedicated search algorithms. For example, as far as I know, there are two papers uh, concerning how to employ Matisse branch and bound algorithm to the constraint based approach to accelerate uh, the resolution process. For, for example, this paper, they get a quite impress impressive improvement. And also, we have a, now we have a general framework for correlation linear analysis of some mode or stream ciphers. For example, in correlation analysis, we want to find some correlation of the output, uh, output key stream. Then we can model it as this set of constraint. Then we can use a mixed integer programming based method or some other set based method to search for the characteristics. For example, we apply this to the one of the finalists of the CISER competition and uh, we identify a quite good uh, uh, linear correlation characteristic of the Morris uh, authenticated encryption. And uh, finally, now we can do automatic DS in the middle attack with differential enumeration. And in this approach, it's quite different from the previous ones because in the previous analysis, we always introduce one type of variable for every cell of the state. But uh, for in this case, we can introduce several different uh, types of variables for each cell. For example, the different patterns means that they have different uh, meanings, and every type of the variable has a different meaning. Then we can model the relationship between the variables with different types to produce some complicated uh, analysis process. So this is my talk. Thanks for your attention. Any questions? <laughs>